Welcome to Sunday Worship. Welcome to Good Shepherd Church. Welcome to worship. Welcome to Good Shepherd Church. Good morning and welcome to Welcome to Good Shepherd. Hello, welcome to Good Shepherd. Well, good morning. Welcome to Good Shepherd Church. Come on in and have a seat. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness will not overcome. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this sixth Sunday after Epiphany, and today we're calling it Super Bowl Sunday. We pray that you find what you have come seeking today in person worship and on our online service, that you will feel touched by the Holy Spirit this day. For our focusing question, please turn to a neighbor and share, how are you blessed by God? How are you blessed by God? We are indeed blessed by God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. So let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and placed in us a well-watered garden. In the desert, you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you washed us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for the water everywhere, 
the flowing water of the Zumbro, snow-covered trees and sledding hills, icy windshields and skating rinks. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and praise through Christ Jesus, our living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Now I'm going to make an announcement, and it's different. You may sing the hymn. Living God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives, make known your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Today's reading is from 1 Corinthians 15. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified of God that he raised Christ whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. 
But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to the Gospel of Luke, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came down to the twelve and stood at a level place with a great crowd of the disciples and a great multitude of the people from all of Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. And blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you all on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. The Gospel of our Lord. Good morning, friends. Today, you will need several long strips of paper like this. If you're here in the sanctuary, you should already have some that look like this. But if you're at home, see if you can find a piece of paper and have an adult help you cut out some strips the long way like this one. In our reading from the Gospel of Luke today, Jesus comes out right in the middle of a crowd of people and stands among them and really looks at them. And Jesus sees every person and notices what they need. And then Jesus teaches about how all people, even and especially people who are in need, are blessed. You might hear someone say, God bless you. And it means that they're asking God to look at you with good favor, good feelings, and make sure that you feel happy and grateful for your life. We especially think of blessings when things aren't going the way we want them to. Like when you were distance learning, uh, maybe you were thinking, I really wish I could see my friends. But counting our blessings means thinking about if there were any good parts to distance learning. Like, did you get to sleep in later? Or maybe you got to pet your cat or dog during class? Or maybe you got to wear pajamas one day? Things... There will always be things that are hard. Our lives have challenges, but we know that God is always with us during those hard times and that there's always hope for other good things to be happening. With your strips of paper, 
I invite you to count all the ways that you are blessed. If you need more pieces of paper, let me know. I can get you some. But take one at a time and write down something you are so thankful that God has provided you. Something you're thankful for even with your ha when you're having a tough day. Here are some of mine. I'm thankful for my family and for my pets that make me smile. And I'm thankful that I have a perspective that values inclusion. Last, we can use these to make a paper chain like this. And if you're here in the sanctuary, we can make the chain to decorate the narthex after worship. If you're at home, you and your family can make one of your own to decorate your house. Have a good week. Before I begin my message, I want to have you think as if you're at the Super Bowl. And your charge is to look around to see what's on the playing field. Look at the players, the coaches, and those in the balcony, in the cheap seats, as well as those not so cheap. Well, today, as I look around and see you, I, my heart is full because I was forewarned that I might be the only Viking fan to wear a jersey. Thank you for supporting that. And I'm also surprised and pleased that I see a few Packer fans, but I'm also surprised that Carrie sits in the back quietly, but she did tell me her Packer sweatshirt lights up. So maybe later we'll be able to see that. I tie that into my message today and you'll hear a few words that draw, draw us in to football. Grace and peace to you from Jesus Christ, the one who was, who is, and forever shall be. Amen. No matter who we are, our identity begins in the water of baptism. So you and I become siblings in Christ, co-workers in God's work, and we can even have differences like our favorite football team. But as we gather for worship, we're also weary we're weary that we're in the third year under the stress and strain of a pandemic, a pandemic that seems as if it's a marathon and the days linger on and on, and we become exhausted, discouraged, uncertain about tomorrow, and yes, many of us are filled with worry and fear. But one thing I believe that the pandemic has taught us is that you and I cannot live well in a lockdown environment. We need people. We need people like gathered here, gathered online, and gathered in the great stadiums. We need people. According to our gospel reading, in the midst of everything that was going around with the disciples, 
Jesus came down from the mountaintop. He stands on a level plain with them, a level place, a level playing field. And a great multitude, a great huge congregation gathers. And they gather to hear and to be healed. They find the gathering a place where their brokenness and their hurting can be seen. A place where people wish, they wish to encounter Jesus and his healing power. And we hear that Jesus on this level plane looks them in the eye on an equal footing, shoulder to shoulder, and attentive to those who are gathered, gathered on the sidelines of life, the lost, the forsaken, the sick, women, outcasts, children, all those we would label as marginalized. And they're all trying to see, to hear, and to touch Jesus. Jesus does pay attention to them, and he sees them and all their needs, and he offers words of blessing and words of challenge. For many of us, there were some hard words to hear, but side by side, the rich, the poor, the joyful and the suffering, the hungry and the full are there. In the midst of everything that's going on around them, Jesus speaks to them face to face, coach to coach, player to player, and offers blessings and yet, and yes, woes of caution. Jesus' sermon on the plain is confronting and challenging for us. And he, like the score of the game, is concerned about outcomes. How will one's faith be played out in the scenario of our gospel reading? I often wonder and try to imagine what that original audience heard and how they responded, how they responded to words they may not have understood, but always thinking, where might they be in this story? I can only imagine those words for some ringing hollow for they lived day by day on the margins, on the sidelines. When you hear or look at the list of blessings and woes, most of us, maybe all of us, want to be blessed by God. I believe we are getting a signal we are getting an invitation to look at everything we know or we think we know from a different perspective, a different angle. The angle is on the level playing field. For me, growing up in Western North Dakota, it would have been a prairie view the open prairie that seeks to reveal everything. Nothing is hidden on the open prairie. They are vistas of great exposure. But I believe even in my youth, they were enabling us to see and experience the kingdom of God 
in our midst. Seeing the world from a different perspective. Seeing the church from a different perspective. And I know now in the course of the pandemic, we are all concerned. What will the church look like in the years ahead? And sometimes we're on the level plane. We might not be able to understand or see where God is at work. And for growing up on the prairie, it took a great amount of trust. Trust in God's promise to be with each of us every day through trials and heartaches. I believe that we are called, called on that playing field and on that level place, called to live a cross-centered life, Tracing the cross in the sacred ground on which we stand and beneath our feet are both confession and forgiveness. And there, in the center, you and I receive grace upon grace. Comfort in times of poverty, times of physical hunger, and yes, times of fear, God is there, and he calls us blessed. God indeed will have the last word. The referee often thinks he or she has the last word, but it's God's word to us who are weary and are feeling deep loneliness at this time. But we hear that God will make things new. Soon in our worship service, we will hear the words of grace and forgiveness, and we will receive the body and blood in table fellowship. Yes, we come to the altar. You can go to the concession stand and you will be filled with what God wants you to eat. But what is revealing is that Jesus just doesn't talk. He walks for us and he gives us his body and his blood. And he recognizes, he pays attention to each of us. And he tries, tries to hear the thoughts of your heart, the feelings of your mind. He tries to pay attention. The good news for us the good news for a Viking fan is there'll be another year. But the good news for us is that Jesus comes to us, continues to come, to come, eye to eye, shoulder to shoulder, and in he empowers us with grace, mercy, peace, and love. And so no matter what our circumstances are, today, tomorrow, or the next day, we rejoice. We rejoice because God calls us blessed. In closing, I want to share with you a Franciscan blessing the words have spoken to my heart as an encouragement of what I want and what I should be praying for, seeking and desiring 
in my life. May God bless you with restless discomfort. A discomfort about easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships, so that you may seek truth boldly and love deep within your heart. May God bless you with a holy anger, an anger at injustice, oppression, or the exploitation of people, so that you may tirelessly work for justice and peace. May God bless you with tears, tears to shed for those who suffer pain, rejection, starvation of their basic needs. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you really can make a difference, a difference as a player, as a spectator, in person, online. We can make a difference. So I pray that God will continue to bless you with discomfort, with anger, with tears, and foolishness. My friends in Christ, you are blessed indeed. Amen. We sing the hymn. Good morning, Rachel. Good morning, Pastor Rob. I would imagine we need to stay on script about what you heard, but I sure have a lot of questions about Pastor Carl Eric. I, I'm sure you do. But I know from the cities with a group from Good Shepherd, 
he'll be watching this service, so I think we better stay on task. We should probably behave, right? Yes. That sounds boring, but okay. <laughs> so what did you hear this morning? Well, number one, I appreciate um, the word that you shared with us this morning. Thank you. I found great comfort in it because I think this passage is one that can cause a lot of emotional strife. Because if you were to look at it from um, a black and white perspective, I certainly find myself in that category of people that Jesus says woe to. Um, I think what I found myself to be thinking about um, was that I was thinking about mindfulness and about perspective and about the fact that I think sometimes we understand things because they have an opposite. We understand light because there's dark. We understand being full because we know what hunger is. We know what warmth feels like. We can understand that because we know what cold is. And in my life, have I struggled? Yes. But it's been more emotionally that I've struggled or mentally. It's not because my physical needs have not been met, um, but because I know what it's like to have my physical needs met. I can only imagine what it is like for those who don't. And because of the ways that I'm blessed with material things, how is it then that I can use those types of material blessings to be a benefit to others? On a day when I have struggled with one thing or another, and I think, poor me, it is having the ability to think about what it, like, let's say, for example, um, a day that's really hard at work, right? I could focus on the fact that work was really hard today. Woe is me. But if I reframe that, I can think, what a blessing that I have a job, right? Um, Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. So I think sometimes our blessings are, are wrapped in a way that we, we need to think about things from the perspective of what may be opposite of them, right? And that can be really hard. I think it's like a muscle you have to, you have to exercise. Yesterday, my son Jude said, Mommy, do you think that you're a person who's a, half, a, a cup half empty person, or are you a person who's a, 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 a cup half full person? Did I say that right? I think I got lost in my words. Are you a cup half empty or a cup half full person? And I said, well, I really like to think of myself as a cup half full person, but it depends on the situation, and it takes practice to be that way. Yes, practice again and again. Yesterday when I was uh, in my study at home and I was reading the lesson, the gospel lesson out loud, when I finished, my wife was in the adjoining bedroom doing taxes. And she said, uh, Rob, I have a question. Oh, now what? But she also asked me, Rob, do you know how much money you spent today on treats for Super Bowl? <laughs> I said, kinda. And she said, well, it's over $100, and we're only going to be the two of us. <laughs> and then she threw it to me and said, I expect you to put that in the offering plate this morning. Wow. Woe is me. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think you really tied the two together. Blessings, and cautions, challenges. And for me, even during the pandemic, when I hear from all ages, studies prove that the one thing that's identified is people's loneliness mm -hmm. for interaction. Mm -hmm. And yet, 
we are blessed to reach out, mm -hmm. but sometimes we can't physically touch. And that is a real concern for me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I think we, we try to do the very best that we can, given the situation that we're in. And that striving, the ability to strive, to do better, is a blessing in and of itself. Excellent. That's a good way to end. Thank you so much. You're and, welcome. And uh, I hope you're enjoying the time with your kids while Pastor's gone. Thank you. Glad he'll be back tonight. I know. <laughs> Together we now enter a time of prayer. I invite those of you uh, with us online to enter any prayer requests you might have into the chat and ask for any prayer requests from the congregation here this morning. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Lord God, we pray together this morning with the Hansen family. With Britta, praying for Emma and Matt and their new baby. With Gunner, for Jesus and God. And with Sawyer and Bart, for their mom with Wendy. Lord, in your name we pray. Hear our prayer. We pray with Gaylene for her niece's grandmother, Joe, who was hospitalized, and her friend, Stuart, who was awaiting heart surgery. Lord, in your mercy. We pray with Judy for those struggling with mental illness. Lord, in your mercy, we pray with Wendy for Sawyer and for all of those who fill our lives with love. Lord, in your mercy, we pray with Kathy for her grandmother, Virginia, who celebrated her 102nd birthday this past week. We lift up with thanks to you, O Lord, that she is happy, healthy, and still there to give us her two cents. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Lord, we pray with Carol that the Spirit may continue to encourage those who are struggling with health issues. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Lord, we lift up in prayer the family of David Schumacher, whose family mourns the end of his time on earth with us, but rejoices that he is with you in heaven. We pray for Kurt Pearson, for Alice and family, for Mark, for Mary Lindquist, and Elaine Eckebrecht. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all Good Shepherd members, especially Kurt and Glennis Pearson, Chris Persinger, and Pam Peterson. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Lord, we pray for Good Shepherd leadership. Especially today, we pray for David Kassler, for Eric Goddard, and for Sue Titus. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Lord, we lift up all those who have fled from danger to seek a safer home for the Afghan families who have resettled in this community, and for Good Shepherd's sponsorship team, especially Kathy Bolin and Carrie Allen, who are guiding their new life here in Rochester. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Lord, we pray with Molly for our troops that are being deployed in response to the situation in the Ukraine and for all troops everywhere. Lord, in your mercy. And dear Lord, we pray with, pray with Krista for Edward as we go through his inability to hear again and we'll have to have a second surgery. 
Lord, in your mercy. Dear Lord, we pray for all congregations in the Southeast Minnesota Synod. And especially this morning, we lift up Bishop Hassan Ali and the Southeast Minnesota, Southeast Minnesota staff. We pray for St. Paul and Red Wing, for Trinity and Ostrander, for First in Glenville, for Concordia of Pickerel Lake in Albert Lee, for Marshall in Adams, for Asuna in Tanzania, and for El Salvador in Colombia. Lord, in your mercy. Be with us, Lord, in all of our prayers. Open our hearts and minds to your love and presence that we may be witness to prayers answered, grace undeserved, and stirrings of the heart unsought among the changes and chances of this mortal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We encourage you to offer each other the sign of peace. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with this heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ our light. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which our Lord was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken and given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He blessed it and he gave it to all to drink, saying, This is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. All are welcome wherever you may be to the feast of Christ's presence. Taste and see that the Lord is good. We sing the hymn. Broken for you and shed for you.
Please stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Having heard God's word and been fed by God's promises, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, life everlasting. Amen. For our announcements, today at 1045 for adult ed will be uh, intern Carrie on diaconal ministry, but it'll also be available for you on Zoom. This afternoon also at one o'clock is our Zumbro area conference assembly, and again, it will be on Zoom. Tuesday, 7.30, men's coffee. As I say that, I pause and I think, some of you men should come. You'll learn a lot as I am. 6.30 on Tuesday is Education and Youth Committee. Also on Tuesday, 7.30, Worship and Music. And Thursday, February 17th, is Social Ministry Committee. And also I want to make note of the flowers embracing the altar are from the memorial service of David Schumacher. Are there any other announcements that we need to make? Any other announcements? We sing the sending hymn. <laughs>
before I share in the blessing, I do have a question. Does anyone have their favorite team in the Super Bowl? All right, the Bengals, and he's going there, excellent. All right, and the Rams in the same household, all right. Oh, their favorite right now. Well, my favorite isn't in the Super Bowl. Receive now the blessing. God, the source of healing. God, the word of life. God, the spirit of truth. Bless you all now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.